Bienvenidos y welcome to the Biz Bruja podcast, where reclaiming our powerful intuition, our sacred medicina, embracing our magic and healing ancestral patterns, invoke powerful creations in our own well-being, our lives, familias, community, and our businesses. Remembering that our businesses are so important at this time. I'm the creatrix of this blogcast, the biz bruja herself, Vanessa Codornu, a modern day bruja, fourth generation psychic medium, clinical hypnotist, energy healer, and soul biz mentor and coach. An Argentine-American who started reading adults at 16, became a professional intuitive at 22, and now guides creatives, intuitives, healers, and entrepreneurs to break through fears, connect to the practical power of their intuition so they can serve the world powerfully. Hola a todos, bienvenidos. Welcome, everyone. Estoy tan contenta. I'm so happy today to be here with somebody that people have been telling me, la tienes que conocer, you have to know, or you have to connect with her. But for some reason, we didn't. And so today we did. Welcome, welcome, Cindy. Cindy Rodriguez de Reclama. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Everybody, we have been like yapping offline and we were like, we better like press record because we're going to leave like all of the gems on the ground. We got to know. We got to know. <laughs> Entonces, let me read her bio before we uh, start to get in deep. So by training, Cindy Y. Rodriguez is a writer, producer, and storyteller who has worked in media for over 15 years. But after feeling disconnected from herself and her roots in 2017, she took on a new role. She created a spiritual hiking and journaling community for women of color called Reclama to help them reclaim themselves in nature. When she's not hiking, she's working as a producer in public media or singing to her 24-year-old turtle. Cindy was born and raised in New Jersey by her immigrant Peruvian parents and identifies as indigenous. Cindy, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, quiero saber, I want to know a little bit about your spiritual journey. I know we don't have weeks and months <laughs> to talk about it, but just a little bit of like, what was it like coming up? indigenous in New Jersey, uh, Peruana. I think we, you said that sometimes you were like the only one in your, in your, you know, space, wherever you were, the spaces you were navigating. Como fue yes. What was that like for you? Well, I was lucky enough to grow up in West New York, New Jersey, and that is right across the Hudson River from New York City, right? A lot of people don't know about it. And it is a very Latino dominant hood, even an immigrant hub. And I love it. But I did grow up around every other Latino you could think of, Cuban, El Salvadorian, Puerto Rican, Dominican. So I was almost always the only Peruana in the room. So this is like a long time ago before Peru made the seventh wonder of the world, before everybody went to Machu Picchu. And so not a lot of people even knew where Peru was. They didn't know about the culture. So having to be proud of it or talk about my culture was not a normal thing. It was very insular. It was something I only shared with like, my family and my cousins. It wasn't until I want to say like fast forward years later in college when I went on this one like life-changing trip that I came back very proud, very proud to be Peruvian. I finally could like sing to the lyrics of like Eva Yon and I knew the beats and I could finally like relate to my cousins in a way where I wasn't like the gringa coming from like New Jersey coming to visit them. It was very different. So, you know, fast track that to now where I've done so much work and like doing everything from ancestry DNA and looking at my lineage to going back to Peru time and time again to get to know family members and trace stories back and try to like put the pieces together that I never had and it's just been such a beautiful journey because I went from kind of like hiding or like not knowing how to talk about my Peruvian culture to being like unapologetically proud <laughs> and like yes. so loud about being Peruvian you know so to me it's just been this like beautiful journey and now I can see like every step like brought me here like right now I love it I love it um in that finding of yourself and that growing up do you remember like a moment or an experience where you felt connected. We were talking about your double tourists, right? Yeah. Um, connected to nature. 
Like what? Because I find that lo que creamos, like what we create later in life at some point, had like roots somewhere. You know what I mean? Oh yes. Um, like I found a. I haven't even written a book yet publicly. I have some secretly, but um, I found like from 20 years ago all these titles and all these like notes and things. You know. So when were those seeds for the hiking, for the journaling, for serving women of color? Like when do you feel those seeds were planted or or were born with you? Maybe. Um, first trips to Peru. It was the place where I could hang out on my grandparents' land without any shoes on and see mangoes growing and avocados growing, go down to the river. And we would have these huge family parties where we were all outside without our shoes and dancing and staying up all night and sharing stories and eating food. And it was, to me growing up, it felt like the only place to do that. And it wasn't until I think I went with my then boyfriend in 2007. And he said, he was like, wow, like you're very different out here. You're like, wow. a, you're like, you're like the person in Jersey, but like on a good day, like here, you're like that every day. And I didn't really notice it. And I think it's because I allowed myself to be myself in Peru and to just be like free to, I felt like that was the only place where I could connect with nature. But then, like I was saying, I used to go back every year, but there was a seven year gap where I didn't get to go. It was from like 2010 to 2017. And I felt very disconnected. I felt like I missed my family. You know, I very felt, I, I felt at home there and Jersey. So when I didn't get to go, I was like, how can I get that here? And so at the time I was kind of going through a loss, you know, relationship ending, my job had like budget cuts and I was at no job. I had no health insurance. I moved back in with my mom after never being there for like since college, like I was 18. And I had to, I felt like I had to find a way to get that joy. And I was also at the same time trying to like find my own spiritual path, not knowing that I was already doing it on hikes. Like, I was like, I wonder what my thing is going to be. Is it going to be tarot reading? Is it going to be Reiki? Is it, what is it, right? I'm like, oh, I guess I'll figure it out later. Who knows what my thing is? And then I'd go on hikes and then I'd go and get that medicine. And like I said, like I am a you know trained journalist. So I would use writing professionally, but it was on these hikes that I would like, I would feel like inspired to write to myself. And when after a hike, and I always tell people this, like you are talking to your highest self. Like you have moved your body, you have been in nature you're present and then you stop in the middle of the woods to like journal and just kind of really take note of you and your feelings and honoring all that. Like I didn't realize all the magic. It wasn't until later I was like, wow, I'm like really making eight-year-old Cindy happy because eight-year-old Cindy siempre estaba afuera, always playing outside, always trying to build a clubhouse with my friends. I would only go back home to eat. And even when I was home, I was journaling. I was making things. I was making my own stationery for God's sakes. Like it was, it's literally all the beautiful things I like doing now. You know, I love the journaling. I love the nature. I love the community. And to me sharing that with people that maybe were a little bit hesitant to go out into nature or like they had a negative experience and now they're working their way back. is just magic because now I've introduced you to a place that's like already yours because it's a part of you. It's a part of me. We just have to take care of it. Isn't that wild? Like that's the only thing that nature asks of us to take care of it. So to me, that seed was planted when I was a kid. And I am always thankful to my mother because she kind of let me be that like wild kid. Like, okay, quiere jugar afuera, vete afuera. Like, okay, cool. And so like, yeah, I had like backyards and things like that, but I live near the Palisades and the Palisades are like these huge cliffs just full of trees and things like that. And it's like a perfect place for someone to go and like seek some adventure, blah, blah, blah. So that to me is just like, I'm reliving that all over again. I always ask people like, you know, when you feel lost, like what is that thing that eight-year-old you would love? Because, you know, between the five, the ages of five and eight, is when you develop like that personality that you're probably going to have for the rest of your life. And they say that kind of ends around eight years old, like, boom, that's how you're going to be as an adult. And I'm like, oh, I see that now because the things that give me joy are the things that gave me joy then. So there's no excuse. Like, I think like, if you just tap into that, you can find a lot of magic there. I love that. You just took me back. I'm like, well, where was I when I was like, five yeah. years old. and I was like, oh my God. Yeah. No, I was like, inventing games, playing with groups, dancing, singing. I like to make up words to songs. And you know, now I now I do musical improv. 
I was just going to say, I'm like, you just told me that you like improv. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't do it in New York city. When I was in New York, I went a couple of times and I was like, I felt at the time and maybe it was again, what I saw at that moment in time, but I don't think it's just that moment that it was very populated by white men. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel comfortable in that place. And then what I realized too, coming back so many years and, and taking this, I was like, oh, in order for me to be able to do improv, I have to release these beliefs about myself, about being like, as a woman wanting to be seen attractive, as a woman wanting to be seen acceptable, you know, meaning like, I don't care about being wild or out there or bold, right? Mm -hmm. Or sexy. But when you're being doing improv, you, you, sometimes you're just, really ridiculous you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I had to allow the ridiculousness so yeah thank you for taking me back I'm like oh what yeah I was like when I was seven I didn't care I was ridiculous I had fun I just like yeah, the world is a beautiful place so one of the reasons that I asked you to come I mean all of the things the nature the hiking um these are so uniquely you like you were saying what will be my thing I just want to honor you so thank you for bringing you to, to magia individual, like you, you are like doing the things that make you happy, and you're showing us through your example that when we make ourselves happy, we can make others happy because we've been taught the opposite. We've been taught oh, yeah. make everybody else happy, make her, and then we're not happy, right? And yeah. so that leads me to, I saw you on Instagram, like I don't know if it was like last week or when it was, and you were talking about something that I haven't really talked about publicly, about thyroid, a thyroid mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. And so do you have a hypothyroidism? Yeah, I have hypothyroidism and it runs in my family, which is linked to Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is what causes the hypothyroidism in my family. And it wasn't until I believe it was 10 years ago now, I feel like I'm coming out of like the thyroid closet because I didn't want to talk about this. Me too, girl. You're, oh. you're, you're the one who just opened the door for me. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't Let's talk, about it. talk about it. Yes, um, because it is... It is one of the most overlooked autoimmune diseases because the symptoms are so not mild, so to speak, but they can be remedied individually. But when a when you see a good doctor, either your internal medicine doctor or your endocrinologist who can put them together and can really give you a blood test and really look into your health, you'll probably find that like maybe that was an issue you were suffering from. You just didn't know because it's like. It was, it was at the time I thought it was stress related. I thought I'm like, wow, my hair is kind of thinning out or like I'm having trouble sleeping or when I do sleep, I'm still tired or, you know, my skin is itchy. And it wasn't until I started talking to my mom and she's like, I, tu tienes problema de la tiroides. Like she already knew because she had been taking this medication. Itchy and I was like, skin. Oh my God. With the itchy skin. I oh, realized in when random, I like my elbow, but not, but part of my leg, like it wasn't consistent. And so Luckily, my doctor at the time was like, oh, let's check your, let's check your levels. And so then that just became a part of like my physical, like just continuously staying on top of it. And I always tell people, I'm like, at first, you know, just this is not apply to everybody. Like I didn't know that it could run in your family, but it also could be a temporary diagnosis based on like your living situation or whatever's going on with you in your life. So at the time I was like, oh, I hope it's temporary because I had a hard time with taking a pill every day for the rest of my life. You know, I didn't want to be dependent on that because I felt like that was a sign of weakness because of course my head would go to, what if like I get stranded on some kind of deserted island that I need to survive? Like, how would I survive? You know, <laughs> honestly. Me too, girl. I'm like, see, I don't have my contact lenses. I don't have my hypothyroidism medication. Wait, hold either. <laughs> no, but fun fact, I learned and I was talking to my then boyfriend at the time, because he had suffered from thyroid cancer. So I had to learn about hypothyroidism and everything that had to do with it because he was going through it. I was going through it. It was odd, but like we learned together and he was like, well, push come to shove. I did do some research and basically um, we would have to kill some chickens and take their thyroid gland and dry it out in the sun. And that would be our medication. I was like, what? So like he had like, he had given me this reassurance, like if this were to happen, so unlikely we would be okay. And so I started to develop this new relationship with my meds. And, you know, it was like a vitamin I started to look at it as. And, um, but I didn't just stop there. Like, it's not just taking a pill and being okay. There's like so many other things that contribute to it, like your food and your lifestyle and, you know, 
physical fitness, you know, what you do or don't do. So I like, I feel like for the past 10 years, I've been on this journey to like get my thyroid like leveled into a point where it's not taking over my life. Like it is, um, you know, it's like a, a silent co-star <laughs> that I have to like work with, you know, and I, I developed a more positive relationship with it. And I didn't feel like it was taking over my life. And I started like saying to myself, like, wow, there's a world thyroid day. Maybe, maybe this is the time, you know, maybe this is the time only because as I've been talking about it on the hikes, a lot of the women started coming up to me and started saying like, I would have had no idea. Like you, everything seems so put together. And I'm like, this is a lot of work. Like I take a lot of care about like what I eat, what I do, who I'm with, like the whole 10 year journey has like really revolved around that. And so I share it so that maybe if you're feeling weird, if you're feeling funky, like maybe it's not you, maybe it's like, you really need to get your levels checked out and just stay on top of it. Because maybe it it's not ascension be- symptoms. Hello. Okay. So that's <laughs> like, no, we, I don't want to take it there. Cause that would be another hour, but yeah, it's like the moons and cancer, the ascension symptoms. And yes, they can impact us. Maybe it's just his th- thyroid. Yes. But then and I want to say like five years into like this whole thyroid journey in the past decade, I was like, hmm, what if, because then I started becoming very spiritual and I started learning about the chakras and I started realizing like, well, if my thyroid is supposed to be attached to my throat chakra, what am I not saying? Yes. What am I not vocalizing? And I'm like, oof, a lot. Cause I've held back for so long in so many different ways. Like, I think I became a journalist so that I could tell stories and have a voice, but I was kind of hiding behind a byline. And it wasn't until like fast forward, like everything started turning into like personal essays and inserting yourself in the story, which is like the opposite of journalism. And I started volunteering my stories on like how I decided to reclaim the Bruja inside of me or how I decided to like really go back and like really reclaim my Peruvian roots and all the different layers of this reclamation journey. Like that I started to notice like, oh, I have a lot to say about everything. (laughs) So this is how I, this is how I break the cycle so that the next generation doesn't have to suffer from this, hopefully, right? Like that's my hope to like break the cycle of this in in the family, both physically and spiritually. I love it. Thank you, Cindy, because when that happened for me, I was like, well, I say what I feel, what I think. Hmm. Yeah. I went (laughs) deeper and I was like, oh, you play nice here. You play nice there. You play nice there. So if someone has a diagnosis, they're on the medication, and you already gave us a lot, especially with the th- uh, the throat, the throat chakra connection. What are some, and you said who you spend time with, what you do, what are some other suggestions? And we know, we know you're not a doctor, you're just sharing your journey of, of what are some other suggestions? You know, go to the oh, doctor. Sure. The yeah. Yeah. Like at first you're probably going to have to go twice a year to get your levels checked because they're going to give you medication and they have to regulate if the medication is okay or not. And one tip I always give to people that I wish I would have known sooner is that when you get the generic, the generic only has 67% of the active ingredient versus something like Synthroid that has a hundred percent and is um, the brand name, so to speak. But something also to keep in mind is that levothyroxine is given to people with a certain kind of um, thyroid issue, because you could have hypo or hyper, which is underactive or overactive thyroid glands, or, um, people who have surgeries might need to only take Synthroid. So it really depends on you, but knowing the two options is something I wish somebody would have told me from the beginning, because I had more success with Synthroid and feeling leveled. Me too. Oh my gosh. So a big, a difference. And it's, and I'm like, why didn't they give me this first, because if you're only using 60% of the active ingredient, that's why we're going from here to there to up and down. And it was affecting my health. It was affecting because it's not just like physical symptoms. It's also mental symptoms. Like you might be foggy. You might be a little fatigued. You might be more forgetful. And then I also started thinking, oh man, what is this? If, am I, am I confusing the symptoms with my ADHD or is this my thyroid issue? So I was always looking at myself like a science experiment (laughs) and I tell people to please do that because it's so easy to come at yourself and be like, what am I not doing? What did I do wrong? And to look at yourself with some compassion because we're all just like figuring this out, you know, and thyroid issues go, um, 
go overlook so much more than, than any other thing, because the symptoms are so mild and they're so like, they could, they could look like something else that's going on in your life. But if you're going to a good doctor, I suggest like you just noting down anything that feels off and your doctor will probably know, like, let's get your levels checked. Let's make sure that that's out of the way because it goes overlooked in women and especially women of color. So I always like, I look out for like the younger people in my family and those that might like come up to me and be like, you know, I'm not sure what to do. Like, what do you think? And like, I could always recommend the doctor. I could recommend like, I know it sounds so boring, but like a food journal, like food is a big part of my thyroid issues. Like to stay away from soy, to stay away from dairy, to stay away from gluten, because all of that stuff will um, affect your thyroid um, balance and could actually contribute to you crashing, especially alcohol. So like it's changed the way I kind of socialize the way I do things, but I have never felt better. Yeah. So like yes. all to say that, you know, like oh my people God. don't think I got thyroid issues. Cause I'm like, I'm so militant about like my yes. health. Yes. And I'm like, yes, that's right. right. Like it's possible. It's possible to live well with this autoimmune disease, like disease. I love it. Gracias. And yeah, I think that like my mother got it after 50 and it was like a really bad year. And then the, my abuela tuvo cancer and then she suddenly passed um, very quickly. Then my grandfather's like so many things, it was a fire in the house. Like there, And I thought, well, it's stress. Uh, but she got it in almost to sit at the age of 60. And then my sister got it younger um, or another family member got it younger. And so I thought that mine was stress. And mm. I kept healing it back, by the way. I didn't take meds in the beginning. Cause I would right. sit there and be like, hire self. What do I need to get? They're like, get rid of this. You do too much for free. Get rid of this charity. Get rid of that. You're doing this free circle all the time. You're doing that. And you have a business and your rent is $2,000 in New York by yourself. You can't, you can't like, I think to me, like my energy is endless. And mm-hmm. because, you know, when you're like flying high on espiritu, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, your espiritu isn't a body and your body is also teaching you lessons. And yeah. so it made me become choosier, pickier to say no more. Oof, yes. Right. And then eventually yes. I did have to take medicine and I was fine. I was fine. They told me I had subclinical, subclinical. Right. So I was like, fine, fine. And then, but I was like, I can't lose weight. I'm working out. I'm with a nutritionist. Mm-hmm. No se va, no se va, but I'm stronger. And then de repente last year, after I overdid it for two years, working too much, I started crashing between sessions. It was insane. Wow. I literally, mm-hmm. and I don't take, I don't sleep between sessions because I'm usually a high energy walking around happy. Like my yep. sessions make me happy and I start to crash. So now I'm leveled off and I work out and I take care of myself. So like you said, it's, it, you can live a good, healthy life. We got to be on top of it. You can't ignore stuff. Yes. Yes. Pregunta para ti, what's one thing, because I know you got to go because we talk too much offline. Well, <laughs> we'll bring you back. We'll bring you back because you we'll know. We'll have a part two. We'll have a part two. <laughs> so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. But she's taking over the comedy world, you know, everything, everything. Um, <laughs> what is one thing, one ancestral pattern <clears throat> that you had to break through to be who you are today? Be giving without not giving to myself first. It is a continuous check-in. And I always tell people reclama keeps me honest because it is I, in order for me to serve the way that I want to serve, I have to be a hundred percent. And I've noticed when I don't do it, I'm like, wow, I, I love the power of reciprocation. And I've, you know, learned about Andy and Cosmo vision and like what that means to me. And I need to practice that in my own like self-care. So if before a hike, I will take a salt bath. I will journal or I clear it all out. I clear it all out because a big part of the hikes is like the energy cleanses. And I'm like, I can't do that. Si no estoy bien. I have to be a hundred percent. So giving and knowing that I have to give to myself was hard. And I don't know if it's because I'm a woman of color growing in the U S or I'm a child of immigrant um, parents or because I come from South America or it's a mix of all of it. But I know that like that has been a big part of it because I had to rid the guilt of giving to myself because there was something around it in the culture that was like, oh, that's selfish. And I'm like, no, that's not selfish. That can't possibly be. Like, I just kept thinking, I'm like, this doesn't add up. So that was something that I think I had to break through. And also, like I said, like looking at at my blocked 
chakras as a as a point of reference so you know my throat chakra and not saying and so now I develop like this mantra that's like you know speak truth to power but lead with love like Mm -hmm. anytime I'm like centered around that then I can like say what I have to say and I've noticed the power like whether I'm standing up for myself or whether I'm like calling a senator to do something about something that I care about like and then spreading the word to others and like giving them a script oh to me that's power because I was able to give to myself and now I can give you the energy to stand up for yourself too. So yeah. to me, that's like, that's it, you know, because so many of us stay silent because we weren't given a voice in the, in the first place because we were never even tallied up in the room. You know, we didn't count. We were told to be silent because it's so much easier to live that way in this country when like you're literally kind of like curated to be like a worker and not an owner of your own life so to speak especially if you come from another country you know you're continuously other so it's like all these different layers I tell people I'm like it's not that you have to add on more it's that you have to take off the bullshit yes. that was imposed on you we're a double colonized people there's a lot of issues in the tissues in this country. You know, there are a lot of things that we have to deal with straddling two worlds of child of immigrants. You know, the, the one where your family came from and the one that you live in. I'm like, this is not something you asked for, but something to keep in mind. Like, don't take any of that personally. You just have to like go through and find like what your true thing is and put it out there. Porque cuenta, like it cuenta, you know, all of that. So I think there's a lot of medicine in that. And you know, there's something to say about like sharing your story in a safe space that I didn't know the power of until like these circles started. Because what we do is like we energize each other as a community. And then when we go out to our back to our families, back to work, we take that with us. We take that with us. Like, excuse you, I woke up at four in the morning for a hike. I shared my story with a bunch of strangers. I came out of this hike feeling bomb. And now I'm going to take over. So, yes, I will say something in the boardroom, Susie. <laughs> like, <laughs> take that energy with you, you know? And I know because I've been the only Latina in the room in many cases at every place I've ever worked at. And this is the thing that keeps me in media because media is hard. Media is really hard, but I won't give it up because I do both because I get to tell stories still in really powerful ways of, for my peoples. And then I get to be in spaces where I get to energize my people. So to me, it's just like they, the yin and the yang, like they all go. It fits. So it's, it's been like magic. And like, I'm like, if I'm going to do all this hard work, then I have to really be amazing at like treat yourself, <laughs> like <laughs> treat yourself, be good to yourself. Like how can we gift me today? And that's like my double Torah speaking, you know, but it's, it's, it's what energizes me. And I'm like, now there's no guilt attached to it. Like giving to myself is like amazing. Cause I'm like, I know I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to pour it out. And it's for a, like the good of my community. And I've seen the difference in them. And that makes me super happy. And I think there's just so much more joy to spread, you know, through, through things like this, like this podcast right here, yes. like this vibration is going to be shared with so many other women that are going to hopefully hear themselves and be like, I'm going to be in that boardroom and I'm yes. going to tell Susie what I think. Yes, you should. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, Susie, me encanta, me encanta, me encanta. So we're at that time where we got to let you go because you got a life that you got to go to and do this. But we're going to bring you back. And this next time, we're not going to be talking offline. We're just going to press record from the minute while we do this again. But where can they find people find you? Where can they do stuff with you? Yes. Um, I am always on Instagram with Reclama. I like to share as much as I can there. And um, we also have a website, of course, but you will likely find me outside <laughs> and join me. I will be, I'm based out of New York and New Jersey, but I'm going to be in California soon. And I really want to try to find a way to keep spreading the joy all while like, you know, kind of like bringing people together to get to know like nature and ancestral land and our connection to it. I think it's so important. Mm, gracias thank you cindy gracias thank you thank you for having me this was yes. so much fun this was medicine thank you yes gracias por esta medicina anyone who's listened and who feels like oh wow esto puedo ser lo que tengo this could be what i have maybe i'm not just tired and maybe i'm not just foggy please go get checked out and be your own advocate porque the doctors mm-hmm. yes god bless them because you know the universe created them too but sometimes they're too busy and sometimes they yes. overlook so be your own advocate 
push through, follow through. I know that I push them so much. Some of them are annoyed with me and they're like, here, you get it. You get this because yes. I want to walk my back. And that's what it is. Así que gracias a todos. And Cindy will be back. Mucho amor. Bye, everyone. Gracias. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Gracias a todos por estar aquí, for listening to this episode. Please make sure to share with everyone if you're interested in Akashic Record Reading, in taking a class in the School of the Healing Artes, or exploring Soul Biz Coaching. Reach out and let's connect and talk about it. I also wanted to share about Raices Sagrada's journey, answering the cosmic call of the ancestors. From October 25th to November 1st, we're going to gather community nurturers, soulful leaders, brujas, healers. We're going to gather in Lima, Peru for two days. Then we're going to be traveling to Cusco and exploring all the four altares in Cusco, the altar of water, Pucupucara, Cuenco, and Sacsayhuaman. We're going to be going to Pisac, to Valle Sagrado, Moray, Olantaytaibo, and Machu Picchu. It's going to be an incredible trip. We're going to be exploring Andean cosmology, journaling, connecting, making offerings to Pachamama in Peru, and coming home with more sisterhood, more healing, and more connection. If you're interested, please go to RaicesSagradasJourney.com, explore there, or reach out, and let me know that you're interested and you'd like to have a chat. Cuídense.